Hello, I'm Aksuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth this morning. Praise God. Are you ready to make your declarations? Come on, let's go now. Say, Father, I receive even as I have demanded for my daily bread. It's coming to me right now. In Jesus' name, I receive every benefit that you have released for this day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Rise up and walk in this reality. Things are coming to you. Praise God. You are receiving increase. You are. Yes, you are receiving increase. Things are working for you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go into today's message. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are here to guide us into all truth. And we are ready to follow you into every dimension of truth that you have for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I declare right now, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now turn your Bibles with me to 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 2 Peter chapter 1. Verse 4. Thank you, Jesus. He says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. He says, we have been given exceeding great and precious promises so that by these promises, when we believe them and begin to walk in them, that we be partakers of the divine nature. You know, many years ago, the Lord showed me something in this scripture. Now I'm just reading it. And then he said, notice, he didn't, he didn't lay claim to the divine nature. He didn't say that by this you'll be partakers of his divine nature. He says that you'll be partakers of the divine nature. Now, this is in line with what we were reading yesterday and day before yesterday in John chapter 17 from verse 20. Jesus says that the world will know that you have loved me. He says that they may be one as we are one. I, you in me, and I in them that will all be made perfect in one. And so, so that the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them as much as you have loved me. Now here he says, we are called to be partakers of the divine nature. Now he used the word the divine nature, meaning he, you are laying claim to the divine nature as much as he is laying claim to the divine nature. It's for every one of us. So there is a divine nature that we have inherited. There is a divine nature that he has called us to be partakers of. Now, this is what eternal life is all about. Eternal life is simply partaking in the divine nature. Look, listen, there, ah, yeah, there is a divine nature. It is called the divine nature, not just a name. It's an active life that we live. It's not just a life that we you know, it's not a cliche. It's not something we just talk about. It's something that is real. We live it. We act it. It's, it's, it's... <laughs> the divine nature. He's called us to be partakers of the divine nature. This is why we fellowship with the Spirit of God. We fellowship with spirits. We are not ordinary. We are not ordinary. We are not just there. No, we are not. We are not. We have been called to partake in something big. The world cannot get this. The world cannot receive this. They can't. Because they don't even see. 
But we have been called. Listen, the call to be saved, the call to walk with Jesus is indeed the highest calling on earth. Some are rejoicing because they receive a call to come and serve in a particular government. And they just feel, wow, what an honor. Hey, you are more honorable. You who have been called to partake in the divine nature. Think about it. Haya Kayaba. Partake in the divine nature. He says, come, come live the divine nature with me. Now you understand why Jesus said, he that believes in me, the works I do, he will do also. And even greater works than this, he will do. Why? Because there is a calling for us to be part of the divine nature. There is nothing Jesus did that he says is too high for us to do. No wonder when he was walking on the water, Peter said, Master, Master, if you are the one, ask me to come on the water. He didn't start interviewing Peter. Peter, when last did you fast and pray? Did you even pray this morning? Did you study your Bible this morning? And you want to walk on the water? I think it's like that. No, Peter said, if you are the one, ask me. Now, these were fellows who were terrified by the storm. They were struggling and praying for their lives. Praise God. And then in the midst of it, to make the matter as well, they see a ghost walking on the water. Oh, wow. They, they were screaming out their hearts. And Jesus spoke to them and said, fear not. It is me. Peter said, look, we've got to be sure. <laughs> He's going to say, okay, if you are the one, ask me to come on the water. Notice Peter didn't say, ask us to come on the water. Because he didn't know if John and, and, and Bartholomew and, and Andrew, they want to walk on water. But, but he was convinced enough that, look, if he tells me to come, I'm going to do it. Praise God. So he said, if you are the one, ask me to come on the water with you. And Jesus just said it casually, but powerfully. Come. Just like that. You know, you know, sometimes, you know, even you, you know, you, you're trying to relate with God and God says, hey, get up, go and ask that person for so and so. And they're like, uh -uh, just like that. <laughs> See, they're just like that. And Jesus said to Peter, come. And Peter actually stepped out of the boat and he began to walk on water. Praise God. He walked on water until he got so close to Jesus. Think about it. Peter was walking on the water. With which power? So you see, the divine nature, all along, all this while, God has been seeking that we come in to walk with him and partake of the, of the divine nature with him. All, see, when man was created, I told you this sometime. Listen, we, we haven't started living the real life that God intended for the earth yet. We haven't started living that life. All we are in is a training ground right now. We are all being trained. We are all being uh, taught. We are all being schooled. You see, because Adam lost it in the Garden of Eden. And since Adam lost it, the, the whole vision that God had in the Garden of Eden, that he was supposed to expand all around the world, that whole vision was suspended. Yeah. Now suspended until Jesus came. Now Jesus came to see how we can be, um, we can, we can be reorganized to live in that same life that God intended for Adam and Eve to live in. But you see, right now, he has still not given us the real blueprint of that land, of that life. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. Until, you see, first of all, we are going to get into judgment and then he's going to take out all the evil of this world. See, because Adam and Eve, they were innocent. They were kept in that place and God didn't take care of the devil. He didn't take care of the serpent. Who was Lucifer, we know. And he deceived them. So first of all, God is going to take out every wicked. That's why the Bible talked about the judgment throne. You know, we're going to face the judgment throne of God. And then he talked about the book of life and saying, everyone whose name is not found in the book of life is thrown into the lake of fire. Because sometimes people don't understand these things. You know, people think, um, so why would God destroy? If he's love, why would he destroy? Hey, hey. He is destroyed. You know, spirits don't die. I hope you know that. And that's why God cannot even kill Lucifer. God cannot kill the devil. Spirits don't die. So, 
he now there's a lot I, I can share with you now but i don't want us to go out go away from what we're talking about so what happened to them satan and all the fallen angels and then the children the the the, the children now the children that these angels produce now all those children you remember the bible says in in genesis chapter 6 from verse 4 it says the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they began to you know produce children so angels slept with women and they began to produce children now from that moment when when they were producing such children note something all the children that they gave birth to their names were never written in the book of life so there are people on earth today that their names are not written in the book of life many people like that so what if they get born again see that's the thing they cannot even get born again there are people who can never be born again there is nothing you can do about it it's not for them it's not given to them they will never be born again that's why jesus spoke when they asked him why do you speak in parable he said because unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given why was it given to this was and it's not given to them meanwhile they were all from the same country they were all jewish people and nobody was born again at that time so what was the separating factor i'll tell you the separating factor some have their names in the book of life some doesn't don't have their names in the book of life it's not when you get born again that your name is written in the book of life no you get born again because your name is written in the book of life this is the truth and the book of life was written before the world began. Now, actually, the book of life was written on the sixth day in Genesis chapter 1. The sixth day of man's, of God's creation. That was the day God created man. That was the day the book of life was written. You know, people don't understand a lot. So when they argue things, they argue blindly. And that's because they will not fellowship with the Spirit of God to open their understanding and teach them. Jesus actually said, it is the Holy Spirit that will guide us into all truth not man so reading many books is not even enough reading hebrew and greek will not do justice to this truth the only person that can teach you truth is the one jesus said will do it and that is the holy spirit he said he will teach you all things he will guide you into all truth you want to learn truth face the holy spirit sometimes it's important you drop all those books drop every one of them and then hear truth. And then when you pick up those books again, your job, your assignment is simple. Anyone that doesn't confirm what the Holy Spirit is teaching is not truth. It's as simple as that. The same thing, that's how you know preachers. Anyone who's not preaching something that confirms what the Holy Spirit is teaching, he's not speaking truth. Praise God. You needed to hear that. You needed to hear that. Praise God. So now that's why since the book of life was written before the world began, the book of life is going to be opened at the end of this age, at the end of this world. You understand what I'm saying? Now, why is it open? Yes, because there are people whose names are not in the book of life. So that's when God is going to open the book. And he says, everyone whose name is not found is, will be thrown into the lake of fire. So they go with their fathers. They go with the devil. They, they go stay. They stay there. They, they are going to be tormented therefore generations forever now haven't done that haven't read the earth of all those wicked people and stuff then life will now begin and life is going to begin with the same intent god had from the garden of eden are you listening to me so we are here for practice praise god we are here to learn but the question is are you learning what are you learning the things you learn today the faith you demonstrate today is what is going to aid you now even those that die even those that die see in the resurrection they are not going to resurrect and have more understanding i'll tell you the truth you see you know if if you if you are taking Allow me to say this. If you are taken to heaven today, your understanding is not going to increase automatically. You will realize that the way you interpret things in heaven is the same way you... You know, that's why sometimes you, you read books of people who say they went to heaven and they saw things. And when they begin to describe their experience and you, you listen to them, you realize that, you know, if you know truth, for example, 
If you know, if you if you're more mature in, in the things of the spirit, more than them. And when they begin to interpret all those things, you look at it and say, nah, I don't think, I don't think God showed you that because that doesn't exist. I don't think God showed you that. You would know. Now, what do you think is going on? Did they see anything? Yes, they did. But you see, they are limited in knowledge and in understanding. So their interpretation becomes faulty. So this is when you grow. If you don't grow now, when we get there, you will still need growth. Jesus is not going to just do everybody like this and then, whoa, now you understand deep revelation. No, sir. You grow in these things. You learn these things. As you grow in the things of the Spirit, your knowledge is increasing. Your, your ideas, your, your understanding is being blessed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray, I pray you catch what I'm trying to share with you. Because our time is up. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.